hopefully we can just, in honor of an out-of-towner, uh, start to chat with her and just have a little extra time to see that. Um, well, we've had an uh, occupation since last fall, and it's we've managed to get about 30 people to come down for a 17 from all over the state, and um, this is kind of what they, I've talked to a bunch of them about like their opinions of what happened, and um, Jill Sport, thumbs up, great job. Um, and great job on like morning tactics. We knew exactly where to go, how to fit in, didn't have any questions or like misunderstandings about any of that. Um, we also found it really helpful for us as an affinity group to have like, we had green bandanas and all of us had one so that if we lost each other, we had a colored flag to like all collect under whoever was in the vicinity. Um, the general, feeling was that the morning went really great, we were all for it, and then we ended up in Zuccotti Park and had a general assembly, and then it all became a clusterfuck, and nobody knew what was going on or how to plug in, um, and then the NYPD was really using the, the streets of New York to pin us, and that people, like, we didn't know where we were going or what would have been a better route or not, but we kept getting dead-ended into these little, like, areas where they could keep us on the streets and keep us penned in, and, um, it was kind of, we wish that there had been more of a larger group feel and larger actions because we didn't know who was there or how many people there were or whether we were being useful or not. Or, I mean, in the morning it definitely felt right, but in the afternoon we like did not know how to plug into anything. Um, yeah, <laughs> what else to say? Everybody felt like really good about coming down, didn't have any problems with housing or transportation. You know, we all were really psyched to be here, and I think overall everybody is thumbs up on all of your planning, you know. Um, I think that sums it up. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Tess is taking a stack. Yeah. So I just wanted to say two specific things for observation of almost all of these meetings. One is that I don't think we use consensus very well or very often. We had a lot of decisions that were emergent of smaller and smaller groups of individuals. Never once was the entire group asked for consent for anything. And consent got a little bit longer. Like we say we use it, we didn't use it very much. Uh, the other has to do with the spontaneous march on Saturday and how that really wasn't spontaneous at all. Like I curated towards this group two weeks before it happened, that that was something that was being planned. And the criticism that's being used about the General Assembly that's on Saturday nowadays is it's only about half of the people who are showing up to it. Well, this meeting is only about half of the people. And you'll note, if you look around, you don't see a lot of people who sleep in Trinity here. There's an entirely separate group of people that tried to get involved in planning. And every time they showed up and tried to get involved, they were effectively kept out of the meeting by one means or another. So they tried to curate this information forward and be part of the planning, but because they weren't successful in getting this access into this meeting, they felt like this was an in-crowd, that this was a click. And because of this, this group turned around and said, I don't see where this spontaneous road stuff kept happening from, despite the fact that it happened on all three days. And that this was more or less planned for, but this group just didn't know that. Um, Matt. Okay. Um, this, uh, about the 17th, uh, <coughs> obviously about the 17th, that's what we're talking about. Um, it's called the, uh, morning, the people's wall thing. I was told I would mention this, so I'll mention it. Um, if the, the gorilla actions blocking traffic were really cool, that's a lot of fun. Um, as far as blocking the doctor's chain, <coughs> if you're going to do that, you can't broadcast it on Facebook because then it's obviously going to get locked down. If you want to block the stuff, it has to be spontaneous. You can probably do it with maybe 10 people if you know what you're doing. I'm not saying we didn't know what we were doing, but if you want to block it, it can't be spontaneous. It can't be like broadcast it. Hey, we're going to do this. And now obviously we'll, we'll block it down. Just let you say it. Uh, a lot of the, what was brought in the report backs, I, I agree with, and a lot of the pluses, I'm like, I'm, I feel really good about at 17. I feel like it was a really celebratory day, and I missed it already. Um, that said, I do want to bring one thing that sort of bothered me right through the whole process, and where when I plugged in about maybe two months before at 17, maybe six weeks, I'm not sure exactly what point I was finally kind of back in 
action after taking a bit of a break was seeing where we had come in terms of um, the issues that we were focusing on, the themes of the day, and the feeling that I had that the people that were in the room were in some ways, um, a lot of the same people that have been doing all this really difficult work for the last year, um, but that we hadn't, you know, the fact that there was um, not so much of a racial justice, it's not, not any really racial justice sort of analysis or framework, in the day itself, um, that we had already we'd lost a lot of the people that would have brought that um, analysis into the day of action, and that that was a real that was very obvious from the day one that I started participating. Obviously, you know, I also came in relatively late in the game, so but there was still seven weeks or whatever to work on it, and um, that's just something that I regret wasn't um, more more front and center. Um, and I do feel like when we were at the height, stop and frisk was actually one of the sort of most successful aspects of the work that we were doing in support of communities of color and um, communities in the outer boroughs, same with immigrant worker um, struggles, and that we could have, we, we just didn't, you know, wasn't part of the way that the day was sort of con conceived. So that's just a big picture um, thing that I'm thinking about as we move into year two, with all the pluses of the wonderful work we've been saying. So we started in the morning with an ad hoc affinity group that hadn't come to any of the training and had no idea what was going on, but we all live in New York and a good number of the people in the group had never been to an OS, OWS function before and had never done like any dangerous demonstrating where they could possibly be arrested or that kind of thing. Uh, I felt like the planning, like we, so we didn't know what was going on, we very quickly figured it out because it made so much sense. So we, we did the 99 squirrels in the morning. At first, we were like running into the middle of intersections and then realized that we were supposed to swirl and that kind of thing. And we are like, oh, this is much safer. And, and like, um, so from people outside of the planning um, sort of group, it, it worked really well for us. And part of what worked really super well for a lot of people in the group is how much fun it was. So. Um, without sort of the baggage of the planning leading up to it, the people that were kind of in my affinity group at the end of the day oh my God. were like completely jazzed. They were so, so happy. And like now they're enthusiastic about uh, being more active. Okay, so. um, I wrote something down because I need to go get uh, oh. uh, From the reports I've heard and read and from the limited amount I've witnessed, we have plenty to be proud of. We assembled a wide range of people mostly safely and provided for their well-being quite nicely. Despite our differences, independent agendas, tactical choices, etc., and in spite of the mainstream media and the NYPD, we accomplished a great deal. Um, one of my favorite managers always told me, though, once you think you got it, you ain't got it. So I'm going to be a little more critical than celebrate our, our, uh, our successes. Um, internally, we speak of forward thinking in these meetings, looking for the future with intent, and I think the ongoing focus on education and training is a good step in that direction, but I also believe we would do well to build trust and nurture clear communication from within and to continue reaching out to our allies for support. The biggest obstacles that I saw uh, in this organization are staffing, work ethic, and communication. One, there simply isn't enough of the people. Uh, two, some of us work really, really hard, while others seem to see it more as a party. And three, knowing our independent strengths and weaknesses allows us to each or allows us to react accordingly. Uh, understaffed, overworked, uninformed volunteers lead to burnout, resentment, and poor decision making. It also jeopardizes team building and even becomes dangerous. Let's move forward, banish elitism within our ranks, and find strength together. Thank you all. Um, um, yeah, I want to echo Audrey in terms of the importance of like racial justice that wasn't really addressed. I do think it's interesting on the Spanish version, Spanish version of the flyer, it did say like um, economic inequality and racism, which I think is great. I don't know why that was on the English one, it might have just been like the last second thing. But I did see friends from Occupy Sunset Park there, and they were out um, in Battery Park during the spokes, and that's amazing. So it's like people are comfortable where they're comfortable being. I don't need to enforce it. I would have liked to see more of a highlight um, or more diversity. Also, in terms of what Sean's saying, I think we'll figure out a way, or maybe we won't, but we do need to address this issue of like infighting and general assemblies, and it's heated, and the stuff with like uh, Emma Goldman, Labor, Zumba, Trinity, and the real issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not trying to get it. I just, these are real issues, and it's, um, 
I think unfortunately it's turned into like us, us versus Trinity. Like there's a lot of overlap. I have friends that hang out on Trinity, fucking Mark Adams, everything. You know what I mean? It's like so. I think that's something. And I also think there were some people from that group that acted out. So it's not just like ooh, you know, whatever. It's something to be addressed. Like a huge thing. Um, and yeah, and I think we've already talked about it a lot in terms of actions. West Side Highway, we, I've already debriefed on that. I thought it was yeah, amazing potential, but just a red flag in terms of like putting people in danger and um, better communication. So. Cool. Um, blue shirt. Maybe. Um, Andy. Um, overall, like, all my comments are all about the planning process of this action. I thought the days were amazing. I think this debrief is absolutely incredible. No one's quit the movement, as far as I've seen, or the debrief. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> measure. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a couple things that I think need to be like addressed. Uh, I think the split between like whatever people think DA and whatever people think other people are is getting smaller and smaller, which is really great, but it still exists a little bit. And I think it was a little bit shown in the creation when the spokes council or the action spokes council was created and then suddenly had decision making power and the Monday meeting didn't really have decision making power. For, mo for a lot of us, we didn't, this didn't really bother us too much because we didn't really see how it actually affected any of our organizing, except that being some sort of strange claim to decision making. Um, uh, on consensus, we're getting way fucking big, and if people think that we, can, I think we really need to start thinking about more effective, inclusive spokes models to make decisions. It is damn near impossible to get this group to come to consensus on anything. I am totally fine with the amount that we should just really reassess how many times we come to consensus. Uh, thanks so much. It's been great. Um, so just if you're going to go with this model of action spokes model, Council, I think it's important to recognize a lot of people don't want to be in the affinity groups, so there should be space for people who don't want to be in the affinity groups and have like clusters rolling if, even if they're big. Because you know that was one difficult thing for us to do in the dead zone is to keep putting people into affinity group. Um, the second thing is we need whenever we're going to do big deals of actions, if you're going to think of assemblies and spokes actions, we need a solid facilitation team so that the same people can't keep going up for every single assembly. There are a couple of faces who are in every assembly, and that's not cool. So. We need a solid facilitation team for the days of action. That different, it gets represented well. It's gender balanced. It, it's every other way balanced. So I <laughs> just want to put that out there. Yeah, I just want to say one thing about uh, the the tactics as far as all the planning that gets brought. I understand a lot of people do a lot of work towards that, which is important. Although, uh, when so much planning goes into something over and over widespread amount of time, like you're saying, this knowledge becomes public to everyone, including the opposing forces. One of the things that I wanted to mention that I think we've maybe gone straight mm -hmm. from and not are forgetting about, which was brought this movement so strong in the beginning and was effective for other movements prior <coughs> to this one, was the idea of flash mobbing. And so if there's some way that we could develop more communication lines and the capability to do things on more of a spontaneous way, whether we can talk about it and discuss it in a way where it's private and use realm, so there is still some discussion and planning on it that's necessary. But if things can be done on a more ongoing basis, um, whether you're planning a long-term action or not, if you can do things in a spontaneous way and create flash mobbing too, I think the effectiveness might actually be more surprising than we know. We have the capabilities with social media and all these other technologies to reach a widespread amount of people in a short amount of time. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to to voice kind of a realization that I had at some point, um, which is that 
what the park did, the way that it brought people in and it, it put them into groups together and got them all working towards common goals, I think this might be the first thing that we've done that's done that since we were evicted. And I was really, it was one of those things where like, I didn't see it coming even though I was trying to do that. And it felt really amazing. Um, and I hope that we can continue to be as intentional about our structure as we were for this day. Because when we, when we aren't, it, it makes that impossible. We have to be able to like have a sense of how we're built and how our networks interact with each other. And if we don't, then we can't, we just can't tell people where to plug in. We can't create these open spaces. And, and that's to me like what Occupy is, is like these open spaces that connect to each other and work together in solidarity. And I felt like we were, we, we were Occupy again in this way that we just haven't been since eviction. So that was really great. Um, Danielle. So I have a short laundry list because I get distracted. Um, so I want to give a shout out to uh, a project that hasn't been mentioned yet today. Um, it was part of the larger picture of S17, uh, Free University. Uh, if anyone went, I love that it was after, so that it was like, I did all this crazy stuff and then I could keep participating and I think it was great for out of towners. Um, and just, it was just awesome. Um, <laughs> I want to give some down twinkles um, to the concept of unsupported actions. Um, so I was in the housing space a lot, because I interact with a lot of our visitors from out of town, probably more than any, people in the housing space interacted more with people from out of town than anyone else did, most likely, the very few people we already knew were there. Um, Friday night's action, I don't know how we, we rein in unsupported actions. I know on Monday night, we stopped a march by serving cake. <laughs> yeah, cake. So maybe we can eat more cake on hand. Um, <laughs> and it's one one's initiative. Um, but I think the, there is a clear contrast between what happens when we do very supported actions. Actions that have bike scouts and have plans and have affinity groups and have maps and have teams running homes and people, you know, listening to the police scanners. Everybody's safe. And the contrast between that and actions when people might check and say, hey, let's go on a march. And, and the safety for participants, especially when we have people here from out of town who don't know when something is supported and when something is spontaneous, is something we really need to look at as a movement. Um, and as Occupy Wall Street in you know, the New York chapter. Um, so then, oh, okay. So then the other thing I wanted to say is I just I feel like we launched year two. I keep on getting calls from people who like want to give us money, and they're like, "But tell me about year two. Year two mm -hmm. looks awesome." I don't care what the mass media said. We are launching year two, and I would really like to see this become a mass movement in America. And so I would love it if everyone thought to themselves. What does it take to go from being like a really strong fringe movement to being a mass movement? Like three quarters, I was reading Spike that three quarters of Americans are in debt or something. Why aren't they on board? So, cool. so wrap it up, let's, uh, let's, let's keep that in our consciousness moving forward. More. Cool. And we'll, we'll be having a moving forward popcorning shortly, so that'll be awesome yeah. to talk to you about your <laughs> uh, Jerry. So I think one of the reasons that the action on Monday uh, was so good is the two days of convergence that happened beforehand. Uh, I think that's really opened up the space. Um, arrests. So we're seeing that people are being targeted. There's a new way of being arrested, which is just being sort of hauled out. Uh, I have such incredible uh, love for everybody who got arrested. I would like us to talk about how to make arrests more meaningful. And also, I want to say to anybody who was arrested, do not miss your court date. And if you know people who were arrested, tell them, do not miss your court date. Uh, and then just to say that uh, days of action like this are very sexy, but they're not the only things that we do. Um, they take an incredible amount of energy uh, and planning to happen. Uh, and they're great, uh, but we have to become more, um, we have to conserve our energy and put it in the right places, I guess is what I want to say. Uh, 
Christina. Oh, I'll pass because it's been kept. <coughs> okay. Um, Hanny. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. A few things. One about the <laughs> meetings. I really love their Monday night meetings. I felt like I got to come to a place and see people's faces again. Um, I thought there was generally good energy, good respect, and good facilitation. Um, and respect for what each other does well. I've met, and I met a lot of people through them. And so I want us to think about good meetings make a lot of good things happen. Um, there needed to be more communication between the various breakout groups because what happens in action affects what happens in commercial, affects what happens in support. So while the structure works in some ways, it doesn't in others. Um, we forgot about comps kind of big time, I think, for the day. And we could have done a lot better with that if we put more time and energy and thought into it. And we can do really good things. We have all the tools to do it. Um, also, we haven't have been mentioned yet, but the pub crawls were cool. But we needed a team, I think, to work on them. It was just like afterthought every week, and some people got stressed to the work. I don't know if they were effective for outreach, but they were loaded. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I also, it's been said, but I don't want this to be a bookend, so I'm glad we're getting to next steps. And then finally, um, I was personally, and I don't know if it was founded or not, very, very worried about this day being on Rosh Hashanah. I was worried about the potential press. And having a service on, on Sunday night was a way to deal with that, and I found this group really supportive of that, and um, that was really, really appreciative. I really appreciated that, I'm sure others did too, and it was also very effective. Like, there's a whole group that planned that day, that um, that event, that had never been in this meeting, and I was just liaising between them, and it brought a whole slew of people that never come back to that event to something that was after their relationship. So that's the thing. Cool, so just, just a reminder, um, we have probably like 20 people on stack. 16. Oh, 16. We have 16 people on stack. We have 20 minutes. They'll probably, we're going to need to close stack pretty soon here. This, these aren't supposed to be one minute uh, things, so please try and um, be discreet about that. Okay. I don't know your name. Sorry. I think Trinity, Wall Street, thing is still a continuation of... You don't speak on it. Trinity, Wall Street is still... The continuation of the occupation of Wall Street. We, we, have, we have an influence station that I do here every day. It's a good way of getting in reach and spreading information on the ground still. So some of the S17 flyers that we've gotten were not. They could have done a better job. Uh, I'm not going to take a more time. <coughs> Deborah. No. I also I have myself on stack. Okay. Um, just real quick, and this kind of piggybacks on some of what Tammy said just now, and what uh, she said earlier, and what support. Uh, Cluster was talking about as far as our Monday meetings, and this was like a concern of mine throughout. As far as like our communication was concerned, I think that in the movement we have this tendency to like take on roles and stick with them like they're our jobs, and then we don't know how to do other things. And then when we can't do something, then that thing doesn't get done. Um, so I would really like to see us in the future organizing in such a way that like we are all taking on all of the tasks and like sort of rotating those roles and it's not just that you know those clusters are not the same group of people um, because then we don't all know how all the pieces fit together and it makes us more sustainable both as individuals and as a movement on the whole. So check on that. Uh, and then I got Austin. Um, so this is the mini version of the heartfelt speech uh, that you heard referred to earlier. So, so we, we got lots of great feedback on AG spokes. Yay, it felt great. It was really democratic, right? Um, but there, there's weak points in that, and how can we learn from it? Because um, that's the air, that's the good stuff moving forward. The top, the, I would submit is that people still stand in front of that AG spokes before everybody goes and has their little conversations and says stuff and molds what people are going to go decide about. So facilitators are one set of those groups. For this and for every spokes that I've ever heard about, there's also a group that is like the tap, 
tactical, whatever you want to call it, who says, this is the map. This uh, is the framework. Go make your decisions based on that. So those are decisions that have been made by people with power. So the question is, how can we make who has that power as horizontal as we can, befitting the principles of our movement? Um, and I, I don't know. I think we should figure it out together. But a, a few things maybe to keep in mind is that hopefully that group can be empowered uh, in, in as open and transparent a manner as possible by the, but through consensus from as many people as possible. Hopefully it can be inclusive of stakeholders who are already working on things. But hopefully it can also be inclusive of people who are just coming in to the work. Um, and we have to, to do that, we have to do the real work of giving people skills and space and feeling comfortable to do that. Um, so we have a lot of models to work, look at from the anti-globalization movement, lots of things. We have our own, frankly, like the most logical place for that to have come from was our cats breakout and that broke, so why? Whatever it is, moving forward, let's, um, let's just make an intentional conversation and realize that that's real work uh, to make sure that that part of the folks is as democratic as the rest of it. Cool. Um, Corey. Um, I only have like two points of celebration to point out. Uh, if we were planning to shut down or be disruptive to Wall Street, I think we should pat ourselves on the back because we yeah, did do that. Um, the proof of that was as I was walking around at the four corners that led to uh, Wall Street, there were lines of employees having to show ID to get to work. So, congratulations. Good. Okay. Maura. Um, I just first want to say how incredibly proud I am of this movement and that it's one year old, it's a baby. We have to really give ourselves uh, uh, credit for what we've done in a year. Because when we look at, at true movements, we look at the, the suffragette movement, we look at even the writing of the Constitution, these things all take decades. And we're in a very, we want everything right now, right now. It's a lot of hard work. The fact that we have more people in this room now than we did before S17, I think says really all we need to know about what we're doing moving forward. And I just want to say how proud I am, and I think what an amazing job we all did. What a fucking unbelievable weekend and Monday was. And I was uh, watching TV Monday morning early, all morning, and the proof is in the pudding when every single news station said, well, maybe not as many people as they expected, but it has started a national conversation about equality and justice and economic inequality. And every fucking station said that. And if we don't think in this room that makes a big difference, nobody talked about that a year ago. Nobody mentioned that. Any of the subjects we're talking about, nobody talked about. So we definitely, a lot of up twinkles on that, that we are making a difference and we should realize that. Yeah, 47%. <laughs> yeah, hello. We're, we're being used to gut laundry right now. Uh, Charles? So many people have said so many positive things, I'd like to try and balance it out a little bit. I think you've all heard the phrase, we are, we are the ones we've been waiting for. I'd like to shift that a little and say that it feels to me like we are the ones we're organizing for. And what a tragic mistake that is. Um, when Occupy had an encampment, tens of thousands of people passed through the park, took on some roles, had a cathartic emotional experience, joined an email list, got on a Google group, attended at least one meeting of a thing. And the vast majority of those people did not participate in our activities, either actively or passively. Um, much larger numbers were active throughout the country um, and in even smaller proportions did they participate in this one year anniversary and to an even lesser extent did they say, I'm occupied too. Instead you have people around the country saying, well, you know, I, I did that thing with them, I was there, but I, you know, they never really assumed the identity of being one of us because instead of being a radical fringe with the role of representing and mobilizing and moving and getting large numbers of people to exercise power, our focus is on our process, our dynamics, our mechanics, our sense of comfort with each other, the extent to which we respect the original founding ideals. I just 
want to put out there that what I respect is that we're winning and Wall Street's losing. And I don't feel that that's happening, and I'd like to, I'd like to generate a greater sense of unease at the fact that that's not what's happening. Uh, Nicole. Oh, great. Um, that's me. Um, okay, so a couple things to say. One, uh, really good job, everyone. <laughs> um, I was really impressed by how things came together. I thought that this action, possibly better than any other day of action, was, like, like, like. was maybe the first time we used a true diversity of tactics, which I think is really important because like, we have to. If we're going to reach a lot of different kinds of people, some who are innovators, some who are going to come, like, on their own, you know, it's amazing to watch how like a permitted concert leads into like a really beautiful spokesperson, right? Like even though it's <coughs> the negotiations that were a little bit sticky. Um, next time, let's have an outreach sector. Like that would be a really good thing to do. I'm sure more people than just us would be interested in what we do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think we're going to go ahead and close stack. Um, but we're going to be going into the year two conversation uh, that Danielle had mentioned very soon, so I think we're right on time. So, closing stack. Cool. Sam. Um, good performance for year two conversation. Um, uh, just to quick around like this, and I know there's been a lot of tension around the process versus action versus da da da. It's important that we do it differently. Um, I just want to throw that out there. Our, our process is important um, as long as our process is going towards something. I also want to share a, a really fun part of my day around shutting down Wall Street. Um, I was in the town Club so much of the day and only got out a couple of times. Um, and as I was trying to get back to the Calm Club after like seeing the park, I was blocked in my in my path by this giant march. And I couldn't get through. And I was like, God damn you, give me and <laughs>
there aren't a lot of people who talk about training in this space, and that's problematic. Um, because if I'm not here, then there are some people holding down that space, and that's awesome, and thank you for doing that. Um, but there aren't a lot of people in this space who can, you know, do like these giant mass trainings a couple of days before an action, and then our, you know, very action mother flies in from Austin to do it. And, <laughs> which is, you know, great, but that's a very specific skill set. It's also a teachable skill set. And in the same way that, you know, if comms got into a really scary place because our comms person was away and we were like, oh, we guess we won't do it. That that needs to change. And so I guess maybe I'll put it next, no, I'll do it right now. Um, please raise your hand if you felt like training four days of actions was important. Awesome. Cool, I agree. Um, oh, everyone raise their hand, by the way, for that. Building actions and learning how to do the kind of action uh, training that I do and <coughs> Oh, great. So now I know who you are. Come and see me and we'll work on this field. Okay? It's okay. Um, Ingrid. Hi, okay. Um, seconding the point that the police are kind of like one of our best affinity groups for action. We wanted to talk a little bit about um, what aspect of planning and security. I think using the cops already no transparency model has mostly worked in our favor. It became a concern of mine with the housing space, and I kind of want to have to apologize for asking a question about it. One of the reasons that information was hard to get out, and one of the reasons that we were probably largely in our staff was that we had to keep that kind of under wraps before we got up the fire code, and we had a lot of concern about a potential like police issue with the fact that we had a lot of people still sleeping in a commercial space. That was owned by a church, but still, you know, like they had probably <coughs> taken the opportunity. We probably should have just like gone ahead and made flyers the second they put a security camera across the street. <laughs> that was probably my bad, but at the same time, it's kind of hard to figure out how much information you get out and when and just who. Um, similarly, like I was basically the support at s 17 nycorg email account, and that kind of sucked, but I didn't know who to ask for help for that because that's giving people access to the contact information of thousands of activists so I think when it comes to asking people to step up to specific roles, there's also this really important question about security, and I don't know how to answer it. You did an awesome job still. Uh, all right, planning in public. I think that we did an amazing job of proving that we can plan uh, completely in public and that we can, should continue to do that because uh, I don't think that 99% of us understand true security culture uh, in, in the world of Facebook. Uh, the convergence, I think that the convergence was very powerful, very amazing, and I wish that it had had more oomph. Um, the, the next action should take one half the time. We need to document what we did right and what we did wrong. Also. Trinity, Union Square, our brothers and sisters that are doing things that maybe we don't think is a great idea, but they're 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 out there, they're doing it, their their skin is in the game. And I, I, I and people were, were were pushing for them to be to be brought into the process in, in some fashion, and I don't think that we succeeded in that at all. Um, should Rebecca leave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Dan. Um, two things. One, thank you. I mean, everyone has said it already. Everyone said it already. Um, I remember Nicole saying it very well in terms of just thanking folks um, for how everyone showed up. Um, and just thank you for for a lot engaging consistently in the conversation about PR and media. I know that it's not everybody's favorite conversation. Um, and I know that there's a lot of distrust and confusion and feelings around what it even means to interface with the mainstream media and fuck them, they don't, what, all these things, right, that come up when we talk about it. So thank you for, for continuing to be open and to create space um, for what we do on the PR team, because we do have the best of intentions um, and a good amount of experience that we're happy to help, and we're also really open to being more involved with other folks as we move forward. Open the um, briefing. Other groups, affinity groups, action planning, and so thanks for all
well the space that's been given um, to the PR team for, um, you know, during the lead up. And then the other thing was just flyers. Um, I made them. I don't think they were particularly very good. I didn't have a lot of time. Um, but they were kind of, I think they fall into that like pit of like, where, what's happening with outreach? Um, and so just, you know, if you're a flyer maker, um, you know, for the next days of action, however we plan those, just like keep your ear to the ground of like when something might be needed because I can make them sometimes, but they're not that great. So other folks should be excited to make flyers for the next day of action better than mine. <laughs> And I just have Chris and Sean left. I, I didn't say anybody, right? Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to just say that the um, the revolution has started. The revolution has begun. The revolution is now. And <laughs> so it's like, I came about that like in S17. It's like happened. We're all sort of waiting for it to happen. And I say that in light of a lot of what's going on here. It's like we have an op we have a, an opportunity coming up on October 13th, and S17 was amazing, and we made a lot of mistakes, and we had a lot of great successes. But if we think that like there's going to be a point in time when all of a sudden we're perfect, and we have a perfect event that's going to change the world like that, it's not going to happen. We're going to build up to that. The revolution is happening now. October 13th is the next opportunity for that to happen, and to experiment and continue to fucking experiment with this shit. <laughs> a, year ago, a year ago, they were talking about a debt ceiling. Now we're talking about strike debt and debt burns. You know, I mean, come on, what's more exciting? Or fucking debt strike, strike debt, man. And, um, <laughs> and one last thing I'll say is like, we won. We fucking won. One person in an intersection, one person in a bank lobby, one person confronting a white shirt fucking commander is living outside of the lie that Hobble talked about. And that fucking breaks the system. That's revolution. That's protest. And we gotta remember that. One person in the intersection, we had hundreds. So let's just keep it up, give ourselves props, and not look at the numbers so much in the media because they're not gonna tell us who we are. We know who we are. <laughs> Oh, Jamba Juice. Um, after Sean, And, and know, hey, what's going on? I just kind of showed up and I saw this OWS thing. Where do I go? 
and having an info table and a person who's like doing that job and it's like not necessarily the most fun job, but setting that up and knowing exactly who's going to do that ahead of time, even if it's like we didn't we didn't do a good enough job this time, but I know next time we will. And and the action framework's getting out ahead of time. I'm really sorry that the text loop lagged. It was really sucked, but like. Sally said that 90,000 messages went out that day, and so like, you know, it's gonna break down sometimes. But in general, I heard a lot of good things from people that it, it was a good system, and as long as it doesn't go crazy, and 90,000 messages going out, it, it does work, but we should figure out how to do that. And I would really like for people to like be involved in doing that and like continuing the conversation so that it's not something that like gets last minute left behind to like a small group of people who's gonna do stuff because we don't really have to be afraid of it. That's it for staff. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, what we have here on the agenda now is we had the idea for uh, popcorning next steps, but we feel like that's already been coming up a lot. We, Danielle's reference to year two and people talking about things that need to be improved um, in terms of skill, education, empowerment, outreach, um, work steps. and responsibility roles. And these seem like they'll be ongoing conversations. Um, so uh, there's a for the for the next 10 or 15 minutes as we're closing out before maybe we get to final announcements. Um, uh, there's already an action planning process in the works at Stripe Debt for Occupy uh, for uh, October 13th. Um, one question is, we could have a, a brief presentation on that day of action project as it's already um, in the works um, now, or we could wait until after the uh, popcorning <coughs> next steps, which really is going to flow sort of organically out of the conversation we've already been having. Um, so, a point, of a point of process. Yes. I just, it sounded like you were going to skip the pop, popcorn thing, which I've been waiting for. Oh, no, no, no. It wouldn't, wouldn't be skipping it. It would just be a matter of do we want to, where we want to put it. Like, okay. uh, so if we want to just like go, how do people feel about going directly into popcorning, just keeping up with year two, right? How do people feel about hearing a, a more formalized strike debt uh, presentation <coughs> now? No? Okay, cool. So let's let's keep going with popcorning then. Um, we'll do that popcorn for like 10, 10 minutes, and then we'll, we'll uh, hear from strike debt. Okay. Remember, it's not, no one's yeah, going to start eating um, popcorn we're here. Encouraging new voices, oh. folks who haven't um, haven't maybe spoken so much already, and also popcorn for those who don't know is like boom, 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 like quick, short, kind of like pithy, um, exciting ideas and visions and fantasies and hallucinations for the future. <laughs> um, now you know what okay. popcorn means. So look at um, that. Right, so, we, so just one of the processor, maybe more experienced people. Do we do staff for popcorn or popcorn is just boom, boom, boom? What's the boom boom boom? Okay, so people call. Okay, who, who calls them? Someone started off, and people can just call on each other. Yeah, try to Yeah, just call in the next boom, boom, person. Boom boom boom. Already spoken a lot. Try to give some other folks an opportunity. Okay. Really short. Okay.
examples, who weren't actually all that active on September 17th. And we need to really investigate that for the future. What is the difference between doing that local organizing work that needs to happen in communities, and that we need to be supporting in a really systematic way, and, and then feeding that into our days of action, and having our days of action, and the people who are involved in this process also really support the efforts that are happening in communities. Year two. Well, um, Audrey, I think you, you called. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I think answering to that, I think we should continue to have these regular meetings, maybe not every single Monday, but like maybe plan maybe twice a month so that we can do some of the skill share and like building up building up the, towards the next action that are more open and more inclusive. Um, and yeah, start planning it now. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, okay, I got it. Things. Number one, we are all outreach. So all these people think about outreach sectors. A year ago, the mantra was, we are all outreach. Don't forget, you always have to be bothering everybody you know about this. Um, number two, um, a lot of people don't seem to know what we have accomplished. We actually have a year of huge accomplishments from our outreach tools like magazines, newspapers, radio shows, TV, etc. And also uh, legislative legislative accomplishments that are actually we actually have that most people don't seem to know about. So I really think we all need to get together as a movement and make a big list of stuff we've done and send it out so people know that we actually have to accomplish stuff. Besides the change the conversation, thing, which is awesome in itself. Okay. Number three, um, national gathering. We had a visioning process where we had a few hundred people come together and make a list of things that they see for the future. Um, the idea is not to impose a vision on Occupy, but to start a conversation. Um, uh, maybe a, a, a living document that everybody can plug into, and uh, as one, a way for people uh, to networking with each other around the country and around the world, uh, inside the movement, but also a way for new people looking to get into the movement to have a map to where they want to go, all right? Because a lot of people will say, oh, I want to be an occupied, but where do I go? Okay. I, I'm sorry, I have to keep going for one second. Um, okay, we, we, we need to, right, it's anyway. good, no, no, it's good. Okay, okay. let's keep, remember popcorn is like boom, 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 like, just do it. Okay, um, so, yeah, keep it short, we'll continue, we'll continue the conversation. Uh, so, I, I was in the eco breakout group on Saturday, and I met organizers from across the country, and I want to network with them in the future, plan national days of action, and hopefully people that were in other breakout groups and then other people, we can facilitate that and we can work with uh, interoccupy perhaps. But I definitely think we have a, a lot of, uh, uh, we have a good uh, scaffolding moving forward. Um, you start the glasses, actually. I'm a black shirt. Um, uh, uh, I wish we would take a position on the upcoming elections as occupied in some non-hierarchical way, and I think that position should be vote against Romney. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay, go Charles. Uh, there was a lot of energy on the list, sir, and maybe folks can speak about it for a vote for yourself on election day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could compliment you. Oh, and I didn't play <laughs> We haven't heard from Yoni at all, really. It's also about the elections. I think we should have a conversation about it, because there is no clear consensus amongst this group, and it is really important, because it can make or break a lot of movements, and I don't think occupies any exception to that, so we should have a conversation about it. Three hippie ideas. One, everyone should ask back if organizers who they were friends with who had left the movement found out why they leave and seduce them back in. <laughs> Two, uh, in the idea of building a mass movement, I want a campaign of bus ads around the country that say hashtag and the system is just broken. And three, those Google groups, who are all those people and how can I email them all to come back? <laughs> Just real quick, I'd like uh, 10 minutes and whenever our next Monday meeting is to talk about um, Occupy Blues of the Kitchen Group did a lot of work 
we got consensus from the GA about doing a giant concert. We met with the city over four times. We have we have a lot of stuff in place to do like a giant world's fair, kind of an occupy what we see the world as festival, where the action itself is a giant outreach festival, where we're going to have all kinds of fun and games and stuff so we can get families, we can get people who are really outside the movement to come in, because a lot of people are kind of afraid. So uh, it, I'd like 10 minutes to do a presentation at, at the next meeting. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I want to see us uh, get stronger and tighter by shaking up the structure. Monday night is just the beginning. Um, Occupy is so horizontal, I feel like a hurricane could go through and not hit anybody. And <laughs> it's, time, it's time to pull it together and use the power we get from linking arms. <laughs> Tessa Casper. Okay. You go take it. <laughs> okay, really quick. Um, we said it a, a bunch tonight. Skillshares, trainings, all the time. Fuck these meetings. Let's be learning from each other. All the people do all the things. That's what I want. <laughs> Yay. Check. Oh, check uh, So, really quickly, I'm really tired, but um, two quick things I want to, and then, and then one other thing. Uh, I want to quickly suggest there's the intentionality of being anti-racist and being feminist. And there's been a lot of projects in the last six months that were a lot better than the first six months around that. So we should move in that direction. And I think, and class struggle direction as well. And I think it's also important to move in a direction where we're intentionally paying attention to confrontation in lower Manhattan and how that interplays with um, take, taking back the commons in, uh, in police and privatized space for public discourse, but also how those two interplay with our local struggles and the local projects that thousands of us are engaged in. And just an example of that is I love Strike Debt, obviously. And I'm a, I support it and I come out to it and I burned my fucking debt and it felt great. But Strike Debt gets a clear, much, much larger place than Hood Week, which Occupy the Hood has been working on a tremendous amount um, and is happening uh, in late October. And, that, and, and the immigrant worker justice projects that have ha been happening constantly and working and fighting on really hard issues right. and making victories. So, um, just some ideas. Oh, shit, sorry. Uh, Sean. Um, this might not be popular. But <laughs> don't worry. Maybe Occupy Wall Street as this thing that causes big days of action doesn't need to exist anymore. And maybe something new that is like less nostalgic and less kind of like self-referential needs to happen. <laughs> Um, and like maybe that's okay that we kind of like let go of the past and kind of go back towards reorienting our energy towards more focused campaigns that don't have to like we don't have the courage of having to be this Occupy Wall Street thing. Um, so we just have probably like three minutes uh, left. Here. So let's Sean go ahead and grab the next person. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, two points. One in Vermont we have been getting people elected to the board of credit unions because if we actually want our money to be democratic, we need to have democratic control over it within those systems. And two, I think every single time a police officer in New York kills somebody, we need to throw a bus about it. A public bus. <laughs> All right. Um, outreach, uh, obviously outreach, but um, specifically to um, minority communities a lot. Um, they are the ones being most fucked by the banks and everyone else. Uh, and so go to them and change their own. It's going to take some time because there's institutional segregation and there's probably tension, but outreach to minority communities and that can help to build a mass movement very, very effectively. Um, so when I talk about trainings, I don't mean like addendums to the Monday meetings. I mean this is a program. I mean like you actually have to commit and like spend time on it. So the people who raise their hands, if you commit to the work, I will commit to you. But this isn't like a half an hour breakout kind of thing. If we're going to do skill shares and training, you actually have to do that. Um, you know, Lucky in the other break I was talking about how he was in a training. It was a very controversial training, even though I was in front of it. But, um, 
where grandmothers were saying, hey, train us to do it, and we will throw down, we will stand in between you and the cops, but we need to do that. The institutions who put together those trainings aren't going to do it. We have to do it, and it's not just going to be me and a couple of other people. It's got to be larger than that. Last person. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to mention that I found very moving and could potentially be pretty incredible, uh, walking along the march when we were civilianing, somebody started up, bum, 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 and then maybe down the street, another one, bum, 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 and this went on for a little while. And it showed a lot of solidarity that was going on within the street in a very subtle but very obvious way. It might be something we might want to do in terms of outreach, um, not just about making flyers and paper and things like that, and making our presence known all the time that way. Okay, cool. So that, that lightning round is uh, is over. I think that um, some folks from Strike Debt are going to give us a little uh, presentation. Um, so, uh, Sam, do you have a point of presentation? Yeah, sorry. It seemed like that was really fruitful for a lot of people. And so, if like, do folks want to keep going for another five minutes? Would like, and if it's like people are tired and Strike Debt wants all of that space and doesn't want to extend, that's fine. But it seems that like there was a lot of like, oh, when that was the last person. So maybe that's a question. So we were going to propose that folks, um, there was going to be a summary, and that if folks should feel empowered to tell a next step meeting with whoever wants to do it. Or if you want to continue getting to the Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I, OK, let's let's do a temperature check on Sam's point here. How Do people want to continue jamming for a couple more minutes on this lightning round thing? Let's go to 10. Okay, um, so I'm seeing I'm seeing some mixed and some down twinkling energy. I don't know if that's like enough to really keep going. What do you guys think that's going to focus? I'm seeing like this and that. Announcements? Okay, let's try it again. Full participation. How do folks feel about continuing the jam session for a couple more minutes? Okay. That's that's pretty mixed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there was exactly six in the rest of the So I'm gonna. How about we do five more minutes? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Five more minutes. Yeah. Okay. The point of process. How do people, how do people feel about five minutes? Okay, that's, there's people are grumpy about that. All right. So here's the thing. Strike that's going to do this real fast. Then we can, then people, as uh, Sandy said, should feel empowered to start to do some announcements and to start talking about next step meetings, two months, uh, twice a month meetings, whatever it is. I think people can have that conversation, but this is how we set up the agenda. People are grumpy about five more minutes. Let's hear from Strike at 013. Okay, hey everyone. Uh, I'm Winter. A lot of you know me. Um, so basically, it's just like a, a, like a large announcement we wanted to do. Um, it's hard to get everyone in the community together, and we just wanted to make a few points and basically have an invitation Peace for the group, for the community. Um, but also, I just wanted to, like, while everyone's together, be really clear about what strike that is, um, what's been going on in that group, uh, what is relationship to Occupy is, all these questions. Um, so the first thing I want to say is that strike that has been a group that's been meeting since about May, um, June, and we started meeting in Washington Square Park. Uh, the group kind of grew and grew and grew. Um, it felt like there was a lot of energy, and now I'm really excited to share what we've been working on, because a lot of us feel like it's really big. And it's... Um, it's a group within Occupy, so I think that everyone here should feel like part of it and feel like really proud of what's been going on in this group. Um, we, I think we're all happy to participate in S17, um, in the deck cluster, and all throughout the weekend. Um, I think we've had a pretty good consensus in our group that what we are doing in Strike Debt is building a, a debt resistance movement um, as part of a larger movement of movements. Um, and I think that we see it as very forward-looking. Um, we have a lot of projects that are under work for year two, and we're really excited to see S17 as kind of a launching pad or kickoff for this year two and all the exciting stuff we're doing. Um, on Saturday, a lot of you know we had a book launch for the Debt Resistance Operations Manual. Um, we had a huge attendance at Judson. It was really exciting to share all the things that we learned while researching this book. Um, I think it was kind of one of our secret successes of the whole weekend and of S17 that Occupy actually put out, you know, a really solid book describing this system as it stands as a debt system and how we can fight it together. Um, I think that, you know, myself in researching this book, I discovered a lot that I really want to share with this community. Um, I think we realized that debt is really something that connects all of us in ways that, like, I was absolutely shocked to discover. 
Um, I have worked with Occupy Student Debt Campaign back in the fall. Um, a lot of time when people were in the park, I was trying to organize a debt strike, which I still think is a large way we could take down capitalism, to be honest. Um, you know, we discovered that 75% of people in this country have like insane amount of debts. And we started reading about municipal debt and how that connects to the austerity fights in Europe. And then I think really where it got interesting is where we started looking at the connections with debt as a system of control and how that connects to the prison industrial complex and how that connects to the altered globalization fights in the early 2000s and how this really does kind of come out of that struggle where this was really a, a structure that was pushed upon the third world from the first world and really moved into the first world that we're experiencing right now. And we call it austerity, but they've been calling it structural adjustment programs for years. Um, you know, there's this like myth that it's this like middle class white, white problem, but it's absolutely just bullshit. I mean, really, when you look at low income communities and when you look at race and debt, it's actually low income communities and people of color that are being absolutely slaughtered by debt. Um, so I think we also have started to, to think about in the free university, we had a lot of really great teach ins and started thinking about how debt connects to eco and how it connects to this like growth economy that's just destroying the entire planet, and making it inhabitable for us. So I think we were all really excited to like to keep this conversation going with, with the rest of the things that are going on in this movement and make sure that we all kind of stay together and keep having communications about this. Um, I'm also really excited to talk about the Rolling Jubilee, which a lot of you have probably heard about. There's basically this little glitch in the system where we can buy cheap debt and then cancel it. Um, I think we're going to try to have a huge campaign for this in the fall. Um, anyway, so to get to my point, we had a debrief yesterday. Uh, we talked about S17. We talked about building debtors unions, possibly having a debt strike, um, building mutual aid networks. But really, we got excited about having a new day of action within the next month. We really want to keep the momentum going from this movement, from these last few days, from these last few weeks of organizing. And there's been a call across the world for October 13 as a global day of action against debt, um, including a, a call for global noise, like casseroles, you know, just making a fucking fuss, making all these connections, being out on the streets. Um, and Natasha's going to talk about our role in that. So does anybody remember October 15 from last year? That was the global day of action, right? We went to Times Square. That was the day when many occupations popped up and other things. This time, it's called on October 13th, and it's called Global Debt Day of Action. And that's the reason I think Strike Debt really stepped up and decided that we should call it. Now, we have three weeks from now for October 13th. So, you know, building on the structures that we've already created for S17, we thought it'd be great if we could just have like three action spokes council leading up to October 13th. We can figure out the zones that we want to target. This time we did Wall Street. Remembering that it's a Saturday, we can go to like the people's home, which is up on Fifth Avenue, or we can go to Midtown. We all can decide that. Now the thing is, we can have this spokes council decided by the people over here. Um, what days they wanted, or we strike deck, we just announce it. So that's a decision that this body can make if it's interested in this call at all. And so if folks are interested in this call, the idea is you come up to the spokes council with already a plan or an idea of what you would like that day to look like, rather than discussing it on the day of. So that we already have, like, you know, moved a step forward and we don't waste meeting times. Um, the other thing is, if you, it's not an affinity group spokes council as such, you can be in an affinity group, or you could just be a cluster, or you could just walk in. So it's totally open, and it's up for the group to take. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. When and where? Um, <laughs> that's exactly, if, if that is a temperature check that needs to be taken if folks are interested to take up this action spokes idea for O13. Um, if not, then strike that can just call it, and you guys, it, it's basically, yeah. Okay, you so yeah, it. so we're going to do a temperature check on, uh, with the S17 planning body, <coughs> we've got all of them working together for, for the summer and into the fall. Um, how do we feel about um, forming this action spokes, three action spokes in the next three weeks, leading to October 13th as a big day of action? Okay, those are, that's looking pretty positive. Looks positive. Um, any, uh, any clarifying questions or concerns? Do, okay, do we want it on Monday or a Sunday? Like, okay, what days people want it? Is, is, this, um, uh, is this day being called by strike that to the rest no, of the No, 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 it's not. It's already a day. It's already a yeah. day. We, like last year, October 15, people called it from other parts of the country, uh, the world, sorry, not country. And um, this, again, this year, it's called the Global Dead Action. There's already global noise, which is the idea of casseroles, 
which is again related to Spain, Greece, like all these, it's the same tactic, so. Um, okay, uh, any amendments that people would like to make to this? Question. Or, or we start some further clarifying questions. That's fine, that's fine. Concerns, questions. I mean, I don't know if it's a clarifying question, but I just have a kind of question as to like, I guess why like this is getting space in this meeting? And maybe that's like just, I mean, I totally appreciate all the work that you're doing and like totally up for the campaign, but kind of with an eye towards how much like the S17 planning kind of shut out other things and to like so immediately move on to another day of action in like three weeks. Um, I totally get that it should happen, but I'm kind of curious as to why it's not happening in like a different meeting. But, hmm. that's just but that's because that we don't have time and again it's the same thing, it's three weeks. And the other idea is that this can build off like other things that people have mentioned. We can have better trainings, better facilitation team, better, you know, come, you know, reach out to people who work part of S17. We could have a convergence, we could have a better process, we could like involve like Occupy the Hood, or like there are all these endless things that people mention. But as somebody who's been part of Occupy for the last one year, it was the same conversation that happened in January. And you know, it, it, it's something that we keep building on, and if you look at another day, we could probably build on the same thing, or like at least experiment more. So uh, Marissa? Yeah. Isn't there a meeting on Wednesday if people want to get more but that specifically like the strike debt project if people yeah. want to come to that or like if people want to do their own thing so that's the idea of the actions folks right anybody can come in okay, it's so not specifically just strike we'll give debt. Them so basically all right on s17 we had an amazing zones divided right we had four zones the reason why strike debt decided to take this up because we had a lot of people in our zone and it was a global debt day of action but it just can't be about that if people want something else. It's just a way to like make a process more horizontal if people need it to be. If people don't want this, they can just come to Wednesday meetings, which are strike dead action meetings, and we can end it over there. It's a decision that this body makes. The idea was to just put it to this body because it already exists. We have nothing else that exists right now. So the idea is to just put it here. If people want to take it, they can take it. If people don't want to take it, that's totally be fine as well. Yeah. Okay, so let me also respond to that. I mean, strike that is going to do something on this day of action. And I think that we are saying that we will bottom line as folks council, we will make sure there's facilitation so that we want to invite the community to also be involved in this like global day of action. Um, and I think that the, the reason we're doing it here is because this is where the community is meeting. There are no other meetings for the movement. Um, so okay. That, okay. Yeah. So Amin had a, kind of a point of process, and, and uh, Lena also had oh. clarifying. I mean, in all fairness to the group that's presenting, that was the agenda. The agenda that got presented to the group at the beginning of this meeting. It's on the wall. Yeah, it could have just. We have facilitators uh, that are running through it. Now, if, if people know, and you had a you had a temperature check on it. Now I can understand the need for more popcorn, but I also understand it's just popcorn. It doesn't result. Five more minutes won't result in me hearing 20 more people. But having said that, that's awesome, you know? But we should just be more respectful, yes. is my opinion. This is like, we have a process, we talk about process, here's a moment of respect in process. Mm -hmm. And they can finish the presentation and it's over. Yes. <coughs> Clarifying question? Yeah, I just, I, I didn't know if you were like actually doing a temperature check on whether you wanted to do your action spokes or whether you were just gonna do your regular, because of the short amount of time, I mean, I must feel like, for me, I'd rather you just make your action meetings and then let us know, and I'd love to participate that. I didn't know if we were trying to make a decision to start a spokes council or whether just to have you guys do it. Uh, I was confused. Clarify, please. So, all right. So we have some a couple more clarifying questions. Oh, Here's the thing: is that strike that is going to call this action, or it already sort of has. And the question is whether we want to use this space to come to a decision about whether uh, this community that's been assembled through the S17 planning process, whether this is the place to to move, or just come and plug into Strike Debt on, on Wednesdays. That's another possibility. The act, the, the action spokes will be the structure that will be used to plan it. Um, and the thing is, we do need to like start, there's maybe some still some elements of the presentation. We also do need to wrap up this overall meeting. And if this becomes a big debate, that, that might not be that productive because Strike Debt is gonna go ahead with it um, in any case. So the question is, um, how relative to this meeting we wanna proceed? Um, so, so, on the, so if you know if this becomes something really controversial, there's mixed feelings. People aren't feeling good. 
that's fine. This isn't the place to do it. Um, I, I think, and I don't know if you guys. Um, okay, so in terms of continuing with some more like feedback points, questions, etc. Who, who do we have? We have Lena, Pete, um, Ethan, Christina, Ethan, Marissa. Okay. Yeah, I'm Lena. These are my comrades on, on stage, whatever. I think Strike Dead is great. I also agree with Nicole. I think it's taking up a little too much time. I also have a problem with this agenda wasn't set for on the online community. So yes, let's have let's have consensus. Let's be respectful. October 13th is super exciting. We do have strike tech meetings on Saturday. We do have an action meeting on Wednesday. You can come to our Facebook page. And I think this is great, but I do think in terms of S17, it's taking up a little too much time. And I disagree with some other people. I think popcorning is huge. I think that involves the whole community. And I would just like to see more of that. But yeah. We just um, tired. Yeah, I mean, I was a little startled. Uh, I came late. I was a little startled that this was taking up just a chunk of the agenda. But looking at, uh, listening to the presentation, correct me if I'm wrong, you're trying to take the organizing energy that's in this room and, and put it into a next step. And I think that's the problem we've, we've been having, right? We have great days of action and then it dissolves and it comes back together. Why not keep it rolling, moving yeah. to this uh, October 13 day of action? It's international, it, 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 and folks from a wide variety of uh, uh, aspects of this movement can plug in. So I think, uh, I think uh, what you're doing is, is excellent. I think we should, should move forward on this. It's my opinion. Okay. Uh, so, can I quickly yeah, suggest so, something? So basically, if people remember, this was the same call which was on October 15th last year. We didn't want to be just like, you know, under the radar and go like, we just got to call it. You know, I'm pretty sure like somebody in this body would have decided to do it again because we took it up last year. Well, why am I doing the ceiling? Because I'm not now, filming that person. We don't need to go oh, further into snap. the discussion. You just got we can just do a temp check right now and end it. Right? It's as simple as this. Does this body want to take up a global day of action or not? If it doesn't, strike that would go ahead and do it. Right? We're just saying that we're there to do it. <coughs> If this body wants to do it, that's awesome too. We're still asking questions. This is the decision that this body makes, and that's it. Marissa. Yeah. I. Okay. Marissa, uh, I'm sorry, but we're pretty good. So Dicey has a point of process, and I, I agree there is like process kind of questions. Dicey, do you want to say? And then Marissa. I mean, I don't see like this proposal is not going to be helpful right now. We don't have space or time to talk about it. I don't think we should even do a temp check. I think that's manipulative. I think, frankly. That like I'm curious how this got put on the agenda out of all the other people and projects that were happening in this group. Um, yeah, I think we should like we should wrap. I don't, I don't think we should do that. Okay, so so would that then involve like maybe doing a temperature check on wrapping this up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, temperature check on wrapping this up. Uh, I mean, see, I'm also like you guys are tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> This oath, this oath, October 13 is really, you know, more longer conversation than we have here as time, and it makes sense, unfortunately. Word. You know, I also think, like Peter, like Peter pointed out, this is a real opportunity. I think when the announcement happened, we weren't paying attention. Okay. I'm seeing an expert facilitator over here saying, like, and I'm, I'm. I just, I just think it's really late. Let's recognize that we've all been in this space for a really long time. We've gone through a lot. Strike Debt has made a call, and the intention is to hold a spokes council that we saw successful this last weekend. And I think there's an invitation. I think we can leave it at that for right now. I think that's the most productive thing. Yay, an okay. invitation. Action planning meeting for Strike Debt will be a Wednesday night at 16 Beaver at 8. Not 16 no, Beaver, Judson. Judson, I'm sorry, Judson. Judson. And we will Judson. just make a call for the folks council within the next few days, put it out on Facebook, send it to the S17 list. And I hope everyone joined us because this is going to be an awesome global day of action. And it shouldn't just be Strike Debt out on the streets. Downstairs and Judson, not upstairs, downstairs. Okay. Downstairs. So I think I attempt about the list. Okay, so okay, so Drew has this is back to sort of S17 like 
This is infrastructure. You really, I think we need to start wrapping it. It's like super cool. Okay, really fast, super fast. And we need to move yeah, to sure. yes. Go, go for it. Announcements. I have, I, have, I have two options. One, we take the S17 list, and all like the services, the support list, all these like these five lists that we have, and we push them all into discussion, and and that's how we continue, or we don't do anything. Can I get a temperature check? Or, so merging the existing S17 lists into one list. Does that does that sound like just so there's not like five lists floating around and we just have a million lists all over the place? All right. One list. No, I'm just asking if that's something, and, and then I'll start moving forward on making that a reality. Yeah. And maybe okay. announce that on the list. Yes, we'll know I will. I will make that. Let's, very okay, great. Let's get. Okay, we're gonna start taking stack for announcements and hopefully. Taking stack for announcements. Okay. Uh, this uh, almost uh, over. Okay, wait, folks, folks. Uh, can you still move? Um, okay. Cool. So. Uh, Okay, so test. Is that okay? All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, Monica. Yeah, should I start? Yeah, okay. start. Hi, I'm Monica. Hopefully, you all know about the Spectre pipeline by now. If you don't, it's this uh, 60 mile frack gas pipeline bringing radon waste shale gas from the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania straight into New York City. And we are a ticking time bomb. Um, we have six weeks until they finish construction of the Hudson River Park spot. Um, I want to employ, implore, is that the mm -hmm. word? Implore, and employ you. Employ you. and organizers to please come get involved in this the core group of people working towards this this is direct it's immediate it's a winnable campaign and it's right here in new york city it's a local issue and it reaches out to a national issue and about fracking in general and into new york state which we want to keep out so please please get involved come talk to me or pete or russell um, that's it. Oh, right. But in, you know, thrown into the. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, Tim. Okay, two things. One, we just had our anniversary. There's anniversaries all over the country. People from Philly, Boston, other places are really asking us to come and be in solidarity with them because they came to us. Philly is October 6th. Boston is September 30th. DC has several. Please go. Also, they, a lot of them want to do swirls. Please talk to me if you want to help people do swirls. I don't know how to do it, but I can connect you. This was asked to me to share. It's a Thursday at 4.30, there's a march from Trinity to the Barclay Center that's opening in Brooklyn. It's evil. And Jay-Z, it's Jay-Z's thing, and they're going to be protesting the Barclay Center and Jay-Z with a march, overnight occupation, and a morning press conference. Thursday, 4.30 at Trinity. Sean? I want to walk. Kitchen has some limited uh, resources remaining and a dedicated uh, staff we can help on an as needed basis. <laughs> Stay in touch. Yay! Especially October 13th, strike that people. <laughs> yes. Please talk to us. We'd love to help you. Yay! Yeah, um, I was totally serious about my offer for pro bono chiropractic exams. Uh, I'm going to give you my contact, so write it down, and you can give it to anyone. It's it's Dr. Brown, Dr. Oh, okay. Brown, I was like, D -R -B -R -O -W -N at functionwellness.com. Email me with any requests for exams for post-arrest injuries, and if you need an adjustment, I'll throw that in, too. But, uh, <laughs> And um, Chucky, thanks for doing your wellness program. And also on Thursday evening, the fucking neo Nazis of Greece are coming to town. They're going to set up an office. We're meeting up at the Cooney Center Thursday evening, um, 365 Fifth Avenue, room 5109, at the Cooney Grad Center Thursday at 6 p.m. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if y'all heard, but the Barclays Center at that's a privately owned public space, um, that weird, like, COVID thing. So that's the yeah. thing. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Earth Day is coming up, April 22nd. What? <laughs>
Strike that. Ego cluster. Giant fucking climbing cap in New York City. <laughs> Rain will be there. <laughs> Stop bullets from perspiration. 
So, the information go to the website, unapeace.org. A part of the National Organizing Protest takes place October 5th to the 7th. So, South Park will be coming be out there as well as um, other organized groups will be the part of this. We <coughs> also are uh, finally free to keep it five months. It will continue on to October the 12th. If you remember the Cuban five, Fernando um, Gonzalez, Ramon Lavavino, uh, Gerardo Hernandez, Antonio Correo, and Ray Ray Gonzalez. So if you need events to take place, you can email them free to Cuban five at gmail.com. You call them at 718-601-4751, or you can check the website free to Cuban five.org. And the information will be there. So we kind of had almost the beginnings of discussion about election day. We squelched a conversation that was going to happen on the discussion list because we didn't want to spam everyone's inbox. I just talked to Drew. We're going to start a list to start talking about this. Subscribe to it, it'll be offered on <laughs> So that only the people who want to talk about it have to have their inbox suffer. Cool, that's it for announcements. Yeah, yeah you all did awesome! <laughs> Pat out yourselves on the back. <laughs> Everyone wants to talk about training, sit by the window over there. ourselves on the back. A well day job. Drew is fucking gleaming of happiness. He was doing an amazing thing. I don't, know, I don't know what he was doing, but he was fucking doodling while the meeting was happening like that dog. I'm not doodling. He was doodling uh, during the meeting. I don't know what's up with that. He was taking new notes and doodling. Have you ever heard of security culture, man? <laughs> it's a green budget. We're fucking live streaming. Yeah, you know. But um, yeah, everyone enjoyed it. Um, the o, I think the O13 is gonna come back with, uh, you know, we've, we've kind of just like expressed our concerns on it, but it really, really wasn't a September 17th um, debriefing, which is something else, but I totally understood what they were trying to point out even though it was during the agendas, and no one complained. But I think people weren't paying attention. That was part of the agenda. But um, bottom line, um, I think it went really well. There was no arguments. A lot of people were just, you know, understanding what happened, what we could do better, what we accomplished over the year, and it was amazing. So I just wanted to say, uh, want some chips? But um, overall, I'm going to recap it. I'm going to go fucking downstairs, get my head straight, and uh, give you all right. How do you feel about the, uh, the overall outcome of this? Winning. Winning. Dude, you must have like a million fucking live stream followers now. Yeah, right? I got a thousand after uh, I got arrested. Yeah. Sean. 22 people, random. What's up? 22. Yeah. So, Sean, tell me about it. Like, how do you feel overall this, uh, this how this went today? So with the breakout, I didn't like live stream that. So your breakout seemed a lot of more like heartfelt apologies that was going in your breakout group. Was that like that's yeah. what happened exactly? Well, you know, the action breakout had a lot of people to like answer for things, and I think it went that came out in a good way. So and, like, people actually stood up and like owned their shit when they made a mistake. Yeah, and, like that happened that way rather than like a big awkward like. So what happened if that guy uh, 
who spoke out before you, what would you said if you were, um, you know, first and not him? I, I said what I wanted to say, but it's like, oh, here's my report back about, um, yeah, I, I couldn't top that. Though. Right, yeah, it was hard. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> How do you feel like, how many people were on that text loop? And I talked to the set, there's like 1,500 people. It's like more than OWS Com Hub right now. I mean, I, I thought it went... And what was the lag? Like how many minutes or seconds? There was, was like an hour. Oh, shit. It was like a really key hour where they were backed up. So we were like 45 minutes behind. And then like things were kind of getting stuck. And the Selly people said that it was just like the network was sending messages back to them. So they were like bouncing back. So they were a, a repeat of the same text going to the same Not repeat, phone? Not repeat, they were like getting stuck. So like they would be sent out, but they, people wouldn't receive them, they were like stuck in the airway. But were, were people, anyone receiving it, or it just it wasn't getting received no, to anyone? Getting, but it was like, Sally people said it was something with the network that they'd never seen before. I mean, I talked to them today and they said 90,000 text messages sent out on that day. Oh wow. I mean, it's just like... Because shit, your phone bill is now fucked. More like our phone bill. Oh, really? It's okay, because Sally is really awesome. Yeah. They gave us that service for free. So we send out all those text messages. And people get like maybe 10 text messages for the day. It's not so much that it's going to bring you back. But like, they really did the heavy work. Really, really got a shout out to Sally. They're probably not watching, but. People are, people are, 20 people right now. There used to be 35. So no, people are watching. Really They know they made 
made one. Yeah, I've had many. iPad mini is just an iPhone maxi. It's a maxi pad for the girls. Oh, I just said something sexist. Sorry about that. So, we wrap this up. So I'm going to wrap it, wrap it up, because there's no one else. I'm going to talk to Sean, um, Yoni. And like, you know, I've been a part of Sean, so I gave me a problem with Sean, which is like the ultimate He got one of those pernal, pernal mustaches. Um, I think we should be at their house starting today, October 16th, and the original show's debate. We should be there November 6th, 7th, or just the next six days. Yeah, I don't think about it. So I was reading your little like I guess I don't know if it was a blog, but it was a, I mean your encounter when you got clipped for the first time in jail and your hearing piece went out. So give me more like what exactly happened and how like how many people were there for you? And, so, um, this was my first uh, non-violent civil disobedience protest, November 17th, convergence around the New York Stock Exchange. There was about 120 of us that were arrested around 7.30 a.m. and brought to one police plaza. Same place that most of the people from S-17 got sent to uh, this past week. And um, so I'm hard of hearing and I have a couple of implants. And um, after a few hours, it eventually does. And I'm 100% down. And so, and there was a lot of people here. It's a really festive atmosphere, but like, I don't hear a sound of it. And, you know, it's really difficult, I think, to make friends, particularly when you're deaf, uh, when you have a harder time communicating. So there's, there's this guy, uh, Minister Eric McGregor, um, he introduced himself to me. I still don't know what his name, I didn't know what his name was back then, I couldn't understand it. But he was still He's an awesome photographer. He's an awesome photographer. Yeah, the photographer. I didn't know that at the right. time, since he didn't have a camera in jail. But then, um, you know, so I explained to him my situation, and he did a mic check, and I understood that, and everyone's listening. And I can do a little lip reading, and so he's explaining, if anyone calls Yoni, you know, grab him, and, you know, bring him to physical attention. And, you know, that was a really beautiful, I think, moment of solidarity. It was a beautiful way of, you know, expressing um, solidarity, especially since this is like an invisible disability. Um, I'm a white cisgendered male. So a lot of people just assume, you know, I don't have any um, forms of oppression, but deafness is one of them. And so that was just wonderful. So when, my question is, like, so when you finally got out to see the judge and not hearing the judge or the... Or I just got a DAT. No, but like, what? How did that feel? Like when you couldn't really speak to your lawyer or your? Uh, I didn't do that. I just got a DAT. Oh, you, okay. And I mean, I have my uh, extra batteries in my equipment and stuff, except I didn't get those until like. Right. Okay. That worked. Cool. Yeah, I guess. So, how do you feel overall of this uh, whole like conversation that happened here in this meeting? Uh, it was really nice just to see like 150 comrades together um, from the same event. A lot of them one year anniversary. There wasn't really much of an argument. But it was like the General Assembly, minus, I think, like the ATM machine and the right. ATM kind of like money grab or something there. Yeah. And so you have these people who really are passionate and care about these issues and yet a diversity of opinions. But we were really respectful of each other. We had a lot of really productive conversations. I would like to see more of these. And it's awesome. We're doing this in Wall Street, plotting against Wall Street. Nice. Right. You know, this will go in history books about Yeah, it definitely years, is. You know? I wish I wasn't clipped, but hey, it happens. All right, well, I'm going to shut down. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, it's totally the new iPhone. I bought it with the Monopoly money that I have growing in my backyard. All right, but I'm going to break this down. I wanted to speak for you more people, but they're all in their little group talking, mingling. Huh? Yeah, the Leisure Caucus, no. Alright, well, I'll get back to you all, and thanks for watching on Occupied for Life. Yes, I'm back from jail, so if you see me getting clipped at Chase Bank um, on September 17 at 9 a.m., c contact me at OWS underscore Casper, because I need the footage, because I just took pictures and streamed something, and I went and got arrested. I was never inside the bank. I was outside by the walk path, and they grabbed me.
All right. Thanks for watching. Occupy for Life. I'm your host, Casper, and thanks for watching. Love you all.